This video contains subject matter that may be offensive and disturbing to some people. If you are the type to require a warning throughout a video or show, let this message serve as your warning. This channel discusses the harsh reality of true crime. If this warning is not sufficient for you, consider a different genre and unsubscribe from my channel immediately. Yo, what's going on? Yeah, Kyra's over there in uh, good old, uh, he was in Rexburg. So we might show you some footage maybe tomorrow or something. He's struggling with uh, internet connection out there. Because he's driving through the hills. So tomorrow we might have some video for you guys to get a better visual of what the hell was going on out there. Uh, but other than the fact that he was there, we wouldn't be doing another show on that. It might be interesting. Hello, freaks! Yeah, so... Uh, tonight's one of those nights where you get to call in again on your personal paranormal, or not paranormal, <laughs> on your true crime stories. We'll do the paranormal one maybe around Halloween. Like we, you know, we used to do more often, but, uh, you know, now, not really, I haven't done that in, uh, as many of those in a while. The, uh, but you call in and you have to have your, you know, have information ready to go, like, Okay, here's where it was. This is the address. Um, you know, and then tell the story. Everybody has one of those instances, right? Who hasn't had some weird close call of some sort? Oh, I have gray. Yeah, so trying to. I think I need almost like a, a color. Yeah, hold on a second. There we go. So there's the uh, the phone numbers right there, and I, I put in above. The, I actually have numbers for a whole bunch of different countries too. So Australia actually has a number too. I put those up there for people like Zozo. Yeah. Okay, so but before we do that, we'll get started on a uh, another Sheriff Grady Judd. <laughs> He's great. Yeah. Oh, we gotta get that fixed. Hold on. All right. So here we go. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being with us, or the good afternoon. Thank you for being with us today. You know, there's some things in life that's got to be true because you just can't make it up. So I want to introduce you to a young man who's 32 years of age and he's old enough to know better, Christopher Hendricks. Now, if you don't know Christopher, you ought to take a look at him. There's... <laughs> I mean, everything that this guy, the way he just talks, and then he gets into an argument with this really kind of, you know, uh, wackadoodle, almost like a BLM member at the end. 
you know, it's crazy. There's a lot of people that got to meet him this morning around I-4 and 557 at the Marathon gas station. This is a picture of Christopher. It's a very nice picture in his state prison outfit. You see, he was sentenced to 10 years in state prison for aggravated battery, which was a plea down from attempted murder. Thanks, Rebecca. He did his full sentence, which with gain time comes up to about almost eight years, and it was released. Apparently he behaved, or at least he was not caught for three years. So let's fast forward to this morning. This morning at 745, he is on Interstate 4, and he's involved in a hit and run crash. That's right. He crashes his vehicle that's registered to him. And as he runs off of the road into the swampy area in his vehicle, Christopher says to himself, self, I don't think I want to <laughs> hang around for this. So he runs. Uh, see, that was so great right there. Christopher says to himself, self, I don't think. <laughs> oh, man, that is the best. Let's hear that again. Says to himself, self, I don't think I want to hang around for this. So he runs. I don't know what he thought he was going to accomplish because the vehicle was registered to Christopher Hendricks. He's from Bellevue, Florida, which is in the area of Ocala. Well, now Christopher is on foot. He's fleeing on foot from this hit and run crash he's involved in that the highway patrol is working and he runs up to the Marathon gas station on 557, which is just south of the interstate. And he's tried to steal this lady's vehicle, her gray Chevy Colorado pickup truck. Well, she didn't think much of that. In fact, she was in the process of gassing her vehicle when he tried to get in, so she appropriately took the gas nozzle and sprayed him with gasoline. Christopher rethought that. He decided that that was not the vehicle that he wanted, so he fled. Well, he ran immediately to a burgundy colored van that was there. And of course, the owner was not in the van, but he was up at the store. The owner said to himself, self, I believe Christopher Hendricks is trying to steal my van. So the man who has a concealed weapons permit promptly pulled out his firearm and extracted Christopher from his vehicle at gunpoint. He would have been totally justified if he'd have shot Christopher, but he didn't want to do that, and Christopher complied and got out of the vehicle. So that's two vehicles that he tried to tap. So Christopher decides that at this point in his excitement that he should probably flee from this particular location because these folks from Polk County, Florida, were not in the mood to have their car stolen or jacked from them this morning. So what does he do? He starts and he runs down the side of the embankment and he jumps onto the westbound traffic of the interstate. Well, there's a fellow driving a box truck. That fellow says to himself, self, I really don't want to run over Christopher Hendricks who has just jumped into the westbound traffic of Interstate 4. And if that's not a suicidal move, I don't know what is. So he slams on brakes. He is rewarded with his efforts by being rear-ended by a semi. So now we have another crash. Well, Christopher sees that he's created another kerfuffle. So he flees and he runs to the other side of the westbound traffic where a very nice person driving a green pickup truck has stopped to help. So he tries to get in that vehicle. Well, that fellow doesn't think too much about that as well, and he's got his doors locked so he can't get in there. Is Christopher deterred? No, he's not <laughs> deterred. So he goes to the fourth vehicle. That is another Good Samaritan who stopped on the interstate to try to help. 
in a red Chevy Equinox. No. He tried to get in that vehicle. That victim grabbed his keys out of his vehicle and he ran. Well, all during this time, people are dialing 911 and our deputies are frantically trying to run in emergency mode to get there. But if you're familiar with this particular area, it's, it's kind of out in the countryside on the interstate. But we arrive. We arrive in force. And we take Christopher Hendricks into custody. And we put Christopher Hendricks in handcuffs in the back of our car. He is not pleased. Christopher Hendricks tries to escape. He kicks the back windows out of the patrol car in an effort to escape. Not only was he going to escape, he was going to steal our handcuffs too. We didn't appreciate that very much. So finally, we've got Christopher Hendricks wrestled under control and locked up in the county jail. It's our goal to send him back to state prison. But first and foremost, I want to thank the two people at the Marathon Station. I, can, I, I saw that it was her birthday up there, but I was just trying to play the whole press conference. But we'll, we'll just stop it. Hold on a second. Happy birthday, Falls Variety Venue. <laughs> Happy birthday, Falls Variety Venue. Happy birthday, Falls Variety Venue. Happy birthday to you. And many more. Hey, not too bad, Mary Lou. And uh, how come you guys always fight, though, at the end of the shows? It's weird. What I call wonderful people from Polk County who said, uh-uh, Christopher, you're not going to steal my truck. You already tore your own truck up. And then when he ran down into the interstate, oh, people thanks, trying Sarita. to help, he tried to steal their car, and they go, uh-uh, you're not stealing our vehicle, and they resisted him. And ultimately, he was arrested. I have absolutely no idea what this guy was thinking. But it was evident this morning he might have had... I think there should be more of, you know, like if, if our whole country had this type of law enforcement, the communication and um, just this is how it is, everybody. It would just be so much better, okay? Somebody like this. Like if they all talk this clearly and explain things that clearly and so logical... Um, you know, it's just, I mean, this idiot at the end who's asking him questions makes it sound like you're supposed to just let somebody steal your car because he said that the guy had a right to shoot. And he goes, well, you know, what, what do you mean? I think some attorneys would disagree. You know, it's, it's ludicrous. So you're just supposed to let people steal your vehicles, your property, just because what? <laughs> I, I don't really, I don't really understand the logic there. It's crazy, but you'll you'll hear it at the end. I had five brain cells, three of them weren't working. <laughs> okay, hold He's on. Let me, gotta, I got to get that line in again. That was too good. But it was evident this morning he might have had five brain cells, three of them weren't working. <laughs> <laughs> He's locked up in the county jail. The highway patrol is assisting. They're doing the vehicle crashes. They will coordinate with and continue to work with our detectives and deputies as we solidify all of the various felony charges against him. Our goal is to send him back to state prison for an extended period of time because it's painfully evident to us that the community's not safe when he's at large. Now, I know probably his parents will think this is a low-level, nonviolent misdemeanor, and he really didn't mean it, and he's sorry, and he's very sorry, and he didn't mean it, and he won't do it again until he does it again. But that's not the way the rest of us think in the system. The rest of us understand him for what he is. He's a dangerous man. Are there any questions? Sir, do you see that the people involved, uh, specifically the victims, were lucky this morning? And You'd mentioned he could have been shot, so perhaps you could argue he's lucky too, right? Sure, it was a lucky day for him. He was not injured in the car crash. She didn't set him on fire when she sprayed him with gas. 
The man who owned the other car while he was committing forcible felonies had every right to shoot him and didn't. He only used enough force to get him out of his vehicle and on his way. So he was as, he was as fortunate as our victims were. Yes, our victims were fortunate. But you know what is really cool about Polk County? We fight back. We fight back against criminals. We carry concealed firearms. And heck, the lady who didn't have a concealed firearm had a uh, Some gas. gas hose, which worked <laughs> just remarkably well. <laughs> but yeah. even after he was in handcuffs in the car, he still mm. fought to get away. Okay. Oh, I remember. What is okay. he thinking? Thanks. I think he's thinking, I don't want to go back to prison. But we're thinking you should. So that's where we are today. Sheriff, you're not allowed to use deadly force for a property crime. Why do you say you would have been justified in killing him? Well, because that is, that is a, first off, he tried a carjacking with a lady. And then he did a, he was doing a, a burglary of a vehicle. And he was in the string of a, of a group of felonies at the time. That sounds pretty shaky. It is if you're the suspect. See that? Jeez. I guarantee you. That sounds you, pretty shaky. When you start trying to carjack somebody's car at a gas station, your subject get, get shot and shot a lot. Did he have a weapon? She doesn't have to have a weapon, brother. You can carjack with just pure violence and force. Stealing a car. He was trying to carjack the first lady. She was gassing up. Hmm. It's all the same Sounds thing. like this guy it's wants to let event. people go that steal your, your car. You don't think that's a dangerous message you're putting out to Polk County citizens? <laughs> that is an absolute correct message I'm putting out to Polk County citizens. Yeah, you exactly. try to break into somebody's car and steal it while they're there with it, that's called armed carjacking. He wasn't armed. It's she, the other guy was armed. It's a, you don't look at individual events. You are, look at the string of violent felonies he was committing. And that's a violent felony to try to take somebody's car from them with force, with or without a weapon. And you're sending the wrong message. The message is you don't have to have a firearm. You don't have to have a knife to be a dangerous individual. And if you come to this county, and if you use extreme violence to try to carjack somebody from their car, if you get shot, that's on you. You can protect yeah, exactly, yourself. Exactly, your idiots. Do what the cops tell you to do. Don't do this kind of shit, and you'll probably live. That's weird. The sheriff, so. I don't care. Freaking morons. That's what the attorneys this, do. Yeah. Attorney's attorney. But I can tell you right now, you come to this county and you do this string of violent stuff, you're blessed. You're blessed because that man up at that store had the right to protect himself. He had the right to protect him, his property. He had the right to protect that lady. That lady had the right to protect herself and her property. Come on, man. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Come on, man. And then man. he goes down to the interstate. <laughs> it's a causes Biden a line. crash. Tries to break in and steal two more cars while they're occupied. While they're occupied, you don't think there's a problem no, with that? They don't have a right to protect their property. That's what they did do. You were saying you should have shot him. I didn't say he should have. I said he could have, but he chose not to. Which was the correct choice, correct? The choice was that he used the force necessary to protect himself and his property. Had he used that force at the end of that string of violent felonies and encounters, and attempted carjackings and stealing from people's cars while they were there in it with it, and subsequently tried to break into and did get into one car with a man yeah. in it. See, th this idiot reporter it. is exactly what you hear all the time. Uh, you know, sort of the in this whole movement that's coming up right now. You know, that that's the problem here is idiots like that. Because where does it end in the other direction? So let's say uh, the guy that owned the vehicle 
did shoot him and killed him because he was breaking into his car and taking it. What should his charge have been? Does this reporter think that guy should get a murder charge? See, it's similar to what happened in the Breonna Taylor. You know, it's um, it's an incident where the police were there. They had a warrant to go there. They went inside the house. The officer got shot first by Breonna Taylor's boyfriend. And then they returned fire. And Breonna Taylor, who was in the crosshair, and I don't know what the boyfriend was doing. Did he just sort of dodge out of the way and let her uh, sit there? And she got shot and she got killed. Okay, but there's literally, I, you know, when these people go, oh, it's murder, it's murder. Where in the hell are you coming up with that? Okay, it's not a similar, you know, exactly similar case, but it's another thing where it's just, it defies logic for people to say, oh, it's murder, it's murder. Hey, you got to make it murder. And now we got this moron sitting here debating with him if it would have been okay for the person to shoot him. So what are people supposed to do? Just let uh, people like this Christopher Hendricks here, it doesn't matter what race either, because I see this, you know, Judd here talks the same way about every criminal, okay? Okay, so are, are they supposed to, or, or are we as a society supposed to just let all of our belongings being be stolen and just let it be and that's okay you know uh, let the criminals have their way let them do whatever the hell they want and nobody's ever supposed to do anything so what i you know i guess what you could say is well you could put the, pull the gun out and not shot well what if you felt like you were in danger if you didn't shoot that the guy would come at you even if he just pummeled you to death and maybe got your gun from you and then shot you because he's bigger than you okay so the thing is is how about this everybody don't be a goddamn criminal, okay? If you're not a criminal, this shit never happens to you. It's weird. Into people's cars and take it with them in it. You can't do that. Here's a message. Mind your business. Don't commit crime. Yeah, well, there you go. Leave people alone. And if you end up in this shape, he needs to count himself Thanks, very Thanks, Lou D and Chrissy. Today. You got any other questions? <laughs> President Trump tested positive for COVID-19. Why don't you or any of your staff in see, the building wear masks? See this little dumbass little lefty guy here? I, I mean, I don't mean to insult people that are Democrats or whatever, but that's what this guy is doing right now. He's turning this whole press conference into a political agenda bullshit. Okay? Just, can you guys just relax a little bit? Okay. Just listen, just watch this shit. The guy starts talking about why he doesn't have a mask on. To count himself very lucky today. And here he comes, everybody. You got any other questions? I don't know if you guys saw it today, but uh, just as an aside, Trump got into a limousine with his mask on and drove by and he waved to all these hundreds and hundreds of supporters, or it might have been thousands, I don't know, out there. And all people are talking about is, oh, it's so selfish. He put those security guards in danger. <laughs> you don't think there's like a window between the front seat and the back seat? And also they were all wearing masks. And you don't think they cleared that to do, to, to do that? And I guarantee it. You want to hear something? This is a truth that I'm about to tell you. If Biden was the one that did that, he went down there, it would have been spun like this. Wow, he just cares so much about his supporters. Wow, what a strong man. But when it's Trump, it's just Everything is awful. Everything is awful. And I, I really, I get so sick of it, everybody. It's the truth. that it, It's just the way it's spun out. Okay? And you know, it's funny. They have a commercial right now that's showing Biden going around, shaking hands, you know, um, you know, wearing a mask and all this stuff. And at the very end, the last scene in this video, he's right next to a whole bunch of people, no mask on, shaking their hands. God, what a terrible message that is, everybody. It should have ended with a mask on, social distancing, and waving. But no, you didn't do that, man. You put it out there. to See, that's what I'm talking about. See how ludicrous this all is? Okay, here we go. Hi, dude. President Trump tested positive for COVID-19. Why don't you or any of your staff in this building wear masks? I'm not going to answer that question. 
you have any other questions you want me to not answer? Okay. Sure. <laughs> he looks so angry. It's crazy. President Trump comes here. He don't have to wear a mask either. Have a good day. <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> President Trump comes here. He doesn't have to. He doesn't have to wear a mask either. Have a good day. He didn't give your deputies any indication in transit why he did what he did. This he would not time. talk to us. He would not communicate with. And that being said, I, I I do I do I I've said it a thousand times. I think it's dumb not to wear masks, okay? But people do have a right not to wear one, right? And you, being somebody like me, if I wanted to wear a mask and I saw a group, a bunch of people standing around not wearing masks, I wouldn't go anywhere near them. I would go somewhere else, okay? Um, but I guess, it, you know, at this point, unless you're going to have this crazy martial law where you force people to wear masks... You know, people do have do have a choice. I think it's dumb not to wear one, though. Okay, that's just what that's my opinion of it. Uh, but I wouldn't go near. It's my choice not to go near other people that aren't wearing masks. And we're still, you know, as you know, we tie all this information together and give it to you pretty quickly. We're still lacing all this together. <laughs> There's still more that know, we don't no. know. Right, I Vicky. mean, if he lives in Bellevue, which is what hour and a half hour and 45 minutes up the road why is he here in the morning why did he have the crash yeah and not you know if a mayor wants to mandate it you know he's taking a political risk doing that but i guarantee it this this is the truth if everybody in the entire country wore masks for like night 45 days straight and never didn't wear one the virus would just be it would just absolutely Almost go away. You'd have to have everybody wearing good masks, though, not just the handkerchief kind of stuff. Why did he flee? Why did he try to carjack the lady who's getting gas? Why did he try to steal the man's car? Why did he jump down the interstate and do burglaries into the vehicle? You know, he was a very dangerous person this morning. And everybody was blessed. The victims of the vehicle were, were black. Hey, thanks, Michael. Appreciate it's too it. late after you're run over by the guy this, this, to I don't have the, leave. the audio version of the... Uh, Anything else? On this streaming software. <laughs> I want to go back to that one part again over here. 45 minutes up the road. Where was that? Yeah, every time he's looking over here, nothing good's happening. Today. got any other questions i do president trump tested positive for covid 19 why don't you or any of your staff in this building wear masks i'm not going to answer that question you have any other questions you want me to not answer thanks lee d and chrissy okay <laughs> and kit kat thank you president trump comes here he don't have to wear a mask yeah i mean that's something i've told you guys before if if you can't afford to do super chats or whatever, don't do them, okay? But if you feel like you can and everything, it really helps out at the end of the month. That's what we're doing. I mean, it helps my channel out and it helps the charities out, but I don't want people not being able to afford to, to buy, you know, take care of their own lives helping me out, okay? Because, I, I, you know, I, don't, I feel bad and I don't really want you guys to do that. If you can, then great. Thank you. Ask either. Have a good day. Any other questions? Did he, he didn't give your deputies any indication in transit why he did what he did. He would morning. not talk to us. He would not communicate <laughs> with us. Man, I, I, that whole sequence right there really made me angry listening to that reporter. He was just like the same exact type that show up to every press conference that the, the White House gives. You know, oh, we're just looking for some little tiny little angle to get in there. Oh, you know what the Chiron said this uh, this evening on CNN when Trump was doing went in the limousine? They called it a joy ride. The Chiron, uh, the Chiron said, a joy ride. Do you think that's legitimate journalism, right there? <clears throat> the same way. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, if, if you have a couple of uh, some friends that you've been healthy this whole time, like literally, I haven't even been, I've only been out of the house probably eight, seven times total, if you can believe that, and last probably like three months. And I always wear an N95 mask with, and I wear glasses and I go to the store. So, anyways, I'm going to put on the, uh, we're going to start doing the calls in a minute. So, can you guys, is that big enough to read that number up on the screen there? Should be able to read that. Right there. So, those are the, that's the number to call in with your true crime story. It just keeps the the spray, you know, the, if everybody wore even just the cloth mask, it, it keeps the spray from, um, you know, extending out as far as it would have. And then that's why social distancing would work better with those. Well, they're acceptable because they keep you the... Um, apparently, what they're saying is when you're really talking loudly and that kind of thing, that's where it really spreads a lot. So if you have a, a covering on, it's going to keep it from kind of just sort of trickling out. You, there's videos that show you sort of the, uh, the pattern of it. Let me see if I can find one. Yeah, let's see if this shows something. Heavy cough. Three, two, one. So that was like Inside a, this lab a heavy at Florida cough. Atlantic University, two engineering professors are measuring heavy the power cough. of a cough. Three, two, one. See, look at that. It's like a cough. Using look at a that dummy, crap. They fill its mouth with a mix of glue. Well, the distance of three feet almost immediately within five sec feet over and over again the simulated droplets blew past the six foot mark. it's a six feet by about a factor of eight the professors say the droplets become less dense the first the mask. on the dummy particles still disperse See? from the sides of the mask. they disperse but so it's nowhere near the very far the distance that's why Certainly social distance you're not wearing works. a mask you're supposed to so. cough into your elbow so there you go that's just a small example there. B one bitchin' waves, bro. <laughs> okay, all right, Zozo. Anyways, are you guys gonna be calling in with your stories or what? I've got the number up on the screen. Is that readable for you guys? Or here, I'll move over to this one. Maybe that's better. No, you can't even see it because I got the damn... Hmm. What if I move this? There. Something like that, maybe. <laughs> Is that better? Can you guys see that now? I'm sure there's just a ton of people that have their their true crime stories. Did we talk about her case, Miss Giss, or was she just somebody that was going to call in and tell her story? I don't remember now. Because that was like three weeks ago. But anyways, I wish we had a whole country full of Grady Jeds. All right, hold on. Okay, you can unmute yourself, 817. And yet you don't want to listen on your computer either. You just use your phone. All right, you ready, 817? Who, me? <laughs> yeah, you're, you're 817, right? 
<laughs> yeah, so, yes, yeah, that's me. Yeah, so just turn down. You, you can't listen to the video on on YouTube. You just have to use your phone no. as if you're... Okay. I don't have it on. All right, what's going on? Okay, so you wanted a true crime story. But yeah, like one that you maybe... Okay, well, where where was You have to well, say where it was located this, and that kind of thing. This was at my house just Tuesday, and I hate oh. to disappoint you that there are no <laughs> dead bodies, but oh. you're going to get a kick out of this. <laughs> okay. Well, who's this? Uh, um, my name is Dee Dee. I live in North Richland Hills, Texas. All right. And I've been watching you for a good little bit. Um, I don't always post or comment, but I just keep you on, and I watch and listen as I'm doing chores or in between remote learning with the kids. So it's very nice. Oh, cool. So um, <clears throat> I think this was Tuesday. It was either Monday or Tuesday because those two days are kind of a blur right now. Um it, it was Tuesday. Um, I was asleep in my bed, and you know, you, you know when you're half awake and half asleep, like you can hear things and you're somewhat conscious, but you're really not. I heard a helicopter overhead. You know, just the constant thud, 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 thud. And we live in a, we live like on a glide path. I live in between two airfields, so you know, helicopters and airplanes, not a big deal. Well, it it just kept coming. It kept coming, circle, 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 circle. And I, I stick my little face out my bedroom window, and there's a spotlight, a strobe from the helicopter that blares at my face. And it, I was like, whoa. <laughs> so I elbow jab my husband. I'm like, babe, there's a helicopter above our house. And I, what, 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 what? He says, I'm like, I said, there is a helicopter hovering over our house. I said, <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> Who did you hack? <laughs> so immediately he grabs the phone. He gets on the scanner. All of our scanners for Fort Worth have been cut. So he's like, okay, this, there's something there's something off here. So we get up. We throw on some clothes. We shuttle down the stairs. And I've got four different police departments blocking our street. I've got a drone operator sitting in my driveway. Um, we've got human hunting dogs in my backyard. We've got cops going through our vehicles, stopping people. And this is 3.54 in the morning. And I was wow. like, oh, my gosh, this is, this is not good. So I, I immediately I check my children. I check all my doors. I put on a hoodie. It's somewhat chilly. Surprisingly, yay for Texas. We have a cool morning. And I go outside, have a cup of coffee, and I'm trying to be chill. I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm good. I'm good. And the cop screams, get back in your house. Uh -huh. There are three fugitives on foot in your backyard. Oh, God. And I'm like, oh, man, you don't have to tell me twice. I'm out. So I take my puppy, because I brought her with me to go potty, come back in the house, and my husband decides to go snoop. He goes in the backyard. Oh, God. He doesn't have a weapon on him. He well, did not I know, but he could himself. get shot because they might have thought he was one. Well, yeah. exactly. Well, because there's dogs. And if they're, if they're smelling anybody but their handler, you know, I was like, you're going to get mauled, babe. Please don't go outside. He says, this is my house. This is my yard. And I have my wife and children in here. I'm going to go look to make sure. Cause we have a big old shed in the back. And it doesn't, it's, it doesn't like securely lock, lock. You know, we just, it's just easy access for us. So he wanted to make sure these fugitives were not hiding out in our shed. So now nope, nobody's in there and they had, they had tripped and fell over our lawn equipment. We had a cultivator and a couple of things out. I have two acres, mind you. So there's a wide space and there's a lot of trees and a lot of bushes and big, huge plants of morning glories where they can hide. So after things calmed down, it was probably about seven o'clock. My children have been up at this time for three, three hours, almost four, and they've got Zoom school and the meeting, you know, in the, and it was just, it was a mess. Come to find out, these fugitives, they caught two. One is still at large. They are professional bank heisters that were fleeing a Houston robbery and it landed in my backyard. <laughs> Wow. They were trying to steal an ATM from the bank branch at the Walmart half a mile from my house. Is this uh, in Fort Worth, Texas, you're saying? Yes. 
Well, I'm in a little, I'm like in a smaller, I'm in between Fort Worth and Dallas. It's called, you know, North Wichita Hills. It's right by Keller. So we're a smaller area, but we had um, our NRH PD, our Fort Worth PD. I imagine it was our Keller PD. And there was one other one and I can, it, it was either probably Colleyville or Arlington. So we have like a lot of clusters of smaller communities just outside of Fort Worth and Dallas. So uh, did, well, did that this, is my true crime story. <laughs> that's a pretty good one. Did they make it? Is it in the newspaper? The story? Um, it was. It w- it did make some forms of the the smaller media realms. Um, I think maybe uh, Fox Dallas may have covered it. Um, I know it's on the blotter for Fort Worth PD, but it was it wow. was something else. Just a regular normal day here in Texas. But one of them, <laughs> one of them, still on the loose. They're, at least they're not. Yes, like, they still have one at large. Are they? They're, they're not really violent one, criminals, though, right? I would hope not. I really hope not because that's that's not cool. <laughs> yeah, well, but um, between me and you, it scared the shit out of me. <laughs> well, we did that show the other uh, few nights in a row, all on Fort Worth, uh, like serial killings, unsolved murders. Oh. Didn't, weren't you? Did you listen to any of those? It was like a whole bunch. Um, I, I know about one, one nasty killing in Arlington that took place several years back and that's enough to break your heart. There's been, there's a lot of nasty, lots of nasty in Fort Worth. Arlington's the worst. Yeah. These these were a whole bunch of them. I did. It was Julie Fuller, Mildred May, Becky Martin, Carla Jan Walker, June Merlin Ward, Marilyn Hartman, Catherine E. Jackson, Karen. It's so sad that there's so many. Yeah, they're all unsolved in your in your city. It was like uh, I don't know a week ago, maybe we were covering those. You must have missed Goodness. that one. <laughs> yeah. Well, considering I can't stay caught up on everything when you're homeschooling two kids and there's not enough hours in the day. Yeah, well, that was it. But that was a good one, though. Man, that's that would have been really mm-hmm. creepy. I'll have to get back on and see if see if I can recap it. Yeah, jeez. I'll have a listen. Yeah, you should. Uh, but I just. If you get an article on it, you should send it over, and then I can sort of. Uh, like I'll email see if it I can me. find something. I know that it was it was a blip on our our media here, but I'm pretty sure I can find something online. I can send to you. Awesome. Well, thanks. Thanks for calling in. You were the first but, one. <laughs> oh, awesome! Thanks. Right. Have a good night. You too. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Dee Dee. All right. Line is open. White House is your daughter. So what's going on? I'm just waiting for people to call in. You know, I guess sometimes people run out of their stories. Here's the thing: is I, if I ever question something like th- this, is what happens to me every day, everybody. If I say, "God, I wonder why nobody's calling in," I'll get about three emails from trolls that explain to me why. They'll say, "Oh God, because you're so mean, you're so rude to your callers and your subs. You're so..." And it's just it, it's so amazing that they take the time to literally sit down and write the email every single night. I've been sharing some of them with, with Zozo on Facebook, just just so somebody can actually see what I'm talking about. It's amazing. I don't know who it is. It's a whole bunch of people. There's like three of them, three trolls. They're all in my spam folder now, but every once in a while I have to go to my spam. Here's what's kind of creepy is I have to go to my spam folder sometimes to find, you know, sometimes emails get put there that shouldn't be. And then I'll go there and I'll see that these same people have been emailing me this whole time with no response. It's like, get a life, okay? No, we want to hear when you have an actual story regarding yourself. That's what this is about. 
Oh, hell no. I, I can't stand Scott Rice. He's a total uh, sub-minor times a thousand. I mean, unbelievable. You know, can't stand that guy. But yeah. I don't, I mean, I, and I don't even want to hear from a, a defense attorney. <laughs> Are you kidding me? God. They're always looking for ways that the guy's innocent that you're talking about. It's like half the time we, you know, I mean, it's great and everything. You can go, you can go do it, but I, I just can't stand the guy. And I cannot stand him. He's just an absolute, uh, you know, the shit he was doing on the Watts case over and over again. Spent months on that shit. Having on people that are just uh, lunatics. Yeah, you, you go ahead and hang out over there. Not interested. Yeah. <clears throat> Why do you have a, a Canadian? You can send me a Canadian. I mean, I've covered a million, you know, like a bunch of cases from, not a million, but from Canada. And I do some U UK ones every once in a while. Oh, you do? Well, send me an email, um, DD. It's in the description. Or I can just type it in right here. But you can send me, uh, if you have a particular Canada case, you can go ahead and send it, send it to me. Yeah, I'm, I wouldn't mind working with, here, here's what I want to do. I want to work with somebody, and I think I found somebody that, might be cool to work with on different things that's similar to me in that they cover tons of different cases and they're not concerned with the the uh, popularity of it okay see i think that's cool they're kind of rare they're hard to find on youtube most of the true crime youtubers out there cover the same cases every single day invent things to keep it going and I'm talking about the live YouTubers um, they just <laughs> and even the ones that make videos you know they just keep doing it because they know what side what side of their toast it's buttered on right and I, I mean I keep saying this but I, I want you guys to notice it there isn't any you know I don't consider it new information on the Morphew case when somebody says, well, we did searching today and we didn't find anything, okay? That doesn't mean jack shit, okay? It means that you tried to invent something and you had a whole show about how you didn't find anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, it's just it's mind-boggling, man. Yeah, it really. And pe and they get rewarded for doing it too. It's that's the part that really, it's it's really disgusting. Really, I mean, it really bothers me a lot. That's one of the things I think about the most. Is that here I am on a nightly basis covering all kinds of different cases. My, you know, I don't get. You know, I get like two to 5,000 views, even though I have 50,000 subscribers and it keeps going up because a lot of people don't really want to watch a three-hour show and they don't want to, uh, and they want to hear about the same case that they're just really interested in over and over again. And the thing is, is I, I don't think that that's right. Oh, you can't see the number? Well, let me uh, add a backdrop to that one. Here, I'll move it back over to here.
I think you can still see it over here. Let me make it bigger though. I don't know. I think YouTube should punish people that cover the same damn thing over and over for just for that. You know, like for the Kanika Jenkins case, though, I guess you can't really do that because in that case I did cover it, but I was really the the debunker of the madness. So it just kept going and going and going, you know. But they should probably, like, punish you in terms of, like, ratings or something. I don't have any idea what that means, VP. But yeah. Yeah, there you go. Look at there's Chewbacca. Chewbacca? Oh, I'll be Chewbacca if you want me to. <laughs> there you go. Chewbacca. Yeah, well, it's weird that they all congregate to hear a non-update. Like, oh my god, oh my god, it's Morphew again? Oh, wow. And they all sit in the chat so happy they have this theory and they blurt it out over and over again. I think what the greatest thing that could ever happen, you know, I, you know I've always thought that Barry seemed like, the, you know, a pretty good suspect in, in the case, right? But, you know, uh, there's explanations you could give for a lot of the stuff, right? So here's the thing is, I think it'd be the greatest thing in the world if it turns out he was totally innocent. <laughs> oh, man. And then I hope that everybody punishes the channels that were so sure that it was him the whole time, okay? Now, I think it very well could be him. I just am not as sure as any of those people are. That's all I can tell you. God, look at uh, Multi O'Driscoll just so wanting somebody to call so badly. Please, will somebody call for God's sakes? Somebody. Oh. I don't know. If people don't have a story, then they don't, they don't have a story. But that's all we were doing tonight. Okay, you can unmute yourself, 865. Don't have your the show on, but all right, go ahead. Hello. Hello, who's this? It's Rebecca Ann. Rebecca Ann, how's it going? Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, I've been crazy busy, and so I haven't even had a chance to get my thoughts in order about this call. But since no one else called, I figured I'd call. Um, so just know I might not. I might be a little discombobulated. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, what's your uh, what's your story? Okay, so this uh, you you're gonna to look it up. It uh, you're gonna have to look up. I think standoff at Target in Maryville, Tennessee. But um, what what happened is um it, this is when i was working and i was working at a little retail store in a strip mall what year was that and I, huh what year was that um i believe it was 2000 it was either 2016 2017 or 2018 um hmm. <laughs> probably 2017 okay 2016 or 2017. Is that a, a Walmart? A Target. Oh. All right, I'm just, go ahead. Okay, just tell your story. I'll, I'll just look up something out. Okay. So, I, I'm, I closed the store up and I set the alarm and I start, you know, I set the alarm, start walking out of the store and um, 
one of the there there was a Chinese restaurant at the end of the strip mall, and he's uh, standing out there with some other people, and they they're telling me that they have the street blocked off that I can't that they're not letting anybody leave. And I'm like, what? You know, uh, I'm looking, I'm trying to look uh, out at the side uh, of the street. Uh, and I could see one side and I could see the blue lights flashing. And all of a sudden, I, you know, we're, we're trying to figure out what's going on. And all of a sudden, you know, uh, these police cars start uh, pulling into the target, like, very edge of the parking lot and this target was right across the street from uh where i worked it it might help you find it but it well i found the target was, well, okay there's only yeah. one what target in marysville you? right yeah. um so um so i start seeing these uh police cars pull in or we start seeing police cars pull in i'm standing there with a, a group group of a you know i guess there was me the guy from the restaurant and a customer and um um all of a sudden they they start pulling out swat uh swat rifles and the they've got their swat gear on and uh, they're getting in position at the at the very it was you know the very end of the target parking lot the the place that you know was closest to uh, to my work because uh, we were across the street and and I I told the them I said well you know they got SWAT rifles we might need to go inside. So, um, so you know, we all go back inside, and you know, I I didn't know what was going on, so I start calling. You know, I called my parents, and I was like, "Look and see what's going on." Um, they there's a they've got me the road blocked, and I can't leave work. And um, there's there's police out there with SWAT rifles, and so I. My parents find out that um, there's there's a standoff or what what they call a standoff going on, and um, there's a man in a a truck with a a gun, and that that's all the information I know at this point. And um, so I we we had windows, of course, at the front of the store, and I'm I'm like. You know, I I didn't know at the time uh, if if there was some sort of a bomb or what uh, a big this big truck that looked like it had one of those it looked like a tank to me um, pulled in the the Target parking lot and then yeah armored vehicle uh, had a like an armored you, vehicle yeah, yeah an armored vehicle yeah with this you know, the long pole where I guess they could detonate um, or there's a helicopter going over. And, but I didn't know what was what was going on. And so I tried to hide in the, in the back of the, uh, in the storeroom with the lights off. And, but, you know, I, Curiosity always gets the best of me, so I, I'm, you know, I kept sneaking and looking to see what. Where did you Where did you work on. over here? Where did you work? What building over here? And it was uh, uh, what uh, was well as if you look at li uh, up lilies I've seen on TV, Maryville. The what? Um, I, Lily, it's just look up as seen on TV store in Maryville. They've closed since closed. Since I I stopped being able to work, but um, yeah. uh, it was an as I was the manager of an as seen on TV store. It was like seven. I think the address was seven three three Watkins Road. Um, yeah. How do you spell what that? It was. Wet, wet, how do you spell that? Watkins? You mean? What? 
Yeah. Yeah. Watkins. W a t k i n s. Okay, right there. All right. Yeah. So I'm. I'm. You know, I'm stuck in this this little strip mall, and the um, the standoff is going on um, in the at the edge of the Target uh, parking lot across the street, and um, so you know, I I just kind of waited uh, waited around in the store. I ha- I was by myself, waited around until. I, I saw the police uh, start leaving, and um, you know, they everything cleared up. And uh, apparently, this guy had just—he had PTSD, and he was he's known to have PTSD. And he had um, was in the back of his truck underneath a tarp, and had just gotten dehydrated or something, and. Uh, they were, had tried to rouse them and um, couldn't rouse them, so, or, I don't, you know, they didn't get a response, so uh, they took it as a standoff, and I don't know what his intentions were. I don't think he was charged with anything, but... He was inside uh, the, uh, was, was he inside Target or inside of it? N- no, he was in his truck, and the uh, it was a pickup truck, mm. or... And he, he was in the back of his truck underneath the tarp. And uh, uh, they, they had said that he had a gun. So I don't know what all that was about. But um, but that's my story. And uh, it was it was kind of frightening at the time. And just seeing the SWAT team come out there right you know <laughs> just a few yards away yeah and not being able to leave and none of the police called the stores and said you know we've got this going on stay inside keep your customers inside you just start seeing the SWAT team appear with their rifles um you didn't you didn't run way out there right in the middle of it with your cell phone like everybody does today <sighs> I did. I did take pictures. <laughs> oh God! I, the, I was through the windows, and um, uh, I did take pictures. Uh, <laughs> but I, I had a, a good view from behind the windows, and I just hid behind the merchandise we had in the windows, and kind of stuck my head up and took pictures. <laughs> Man, I'm so disappointed. I, I, I was. Uh, picturing to see you running into the the parking lot with your cell phone and right in the middle of like the SWAT team and everything you know because that's what people I do I know I really wanted to but um, I'm just kidding I, just, I wouldn't want you to do I that. know you are I just I, but I really did I really would have wanted to do that I just figured that would make me look like a big dumbass, um, <laughs> and I might be dead if I yeah. if a bomb went off. And <laughs> yeah, that's right. You start thinking about there might be a bomb when the armored vehicle pulls in, and that little yes, and YouTube yeah. algorithms. That's just a comment she was making. It has nothing to do with anything. It was. I'm not sure if YouTube is like, oh my God, do you hear that? It said. I don't even want to say the word. Jeez. Oh, no. It's so paranoid. That might be one of the... Yeah, who knows? That might be one of the words that you cannot say or you'll be demonetized. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I don't really care if it's demonetized because there's really hardly any... There's, like, no ad revenue whatsoever on on this channel. Right. You know. Well, that's why you have a support of freaks to keep you going yeah well i mean you guys have been amazing but it's kind of mm-hmm. weird it's weird you know that there's no that they don't recognize i mean you know a pretty high average you know, watch time you'd think that they would do something with that but apparently not right. so anyway. no. well thanks for uh calling in with your uh, your story okay. that must have been Thank pretty freaky SWAT. Let, thank you for letting me call and 
somebody needs to call in. I know you can hear me out there. Well, the thing is, is, you know, there's only a certain amount of people that have have (laughs) the guts to actually call in and tell their tell the story. And I think most of those people have already called in. I just always hope, you know, maybe there'll be some few new people that are calling in because they had something. And, you know, a lot of people do email. Oh, okay, next time I'm going to call. And then they write this, you know, 10 paragraph uh, explanation of their story. And then they end up never calling in. It's like, well, how about you just don't send me the email. Tell me, telling me your true crime story, because that's what the show is about tonight. Right. So when when we have these then call in, don't say, oh, yeah, I missed it. Oh, here's mine. Okay, that just doesn't work. Because I don't have not, well, not only I don't really have the time either to read a, a like a fifteen or you know twenty page email about a a story. Yeah, if, if I can if I can call in, everyone else can because I've got this uh, annoying baby voice and and I'm embarrassed to hear my own self talk. I don't think I, your I, I don't, don't think your voice what? is anno- uh, embarrassing at all. Oh well, thank you, but I think it's I think it's cute. <laughs> you got the oh. accent and everything. It doesn't sound like a little baby. Jesus, come on. <laughs> hey, come on. It sounds like a little five or six-year-old. Nope. Oh. It doesn't. Hey, look at that. Another call. But hey, you thanks. Your, vo- your voice sounds good, though. Don't say that. Oh, thanks, Greg. Right. I'll talk to you later. All right. Talk to you later. See you. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. So now 404, you can uh, unmute yourself. Hi, Gray. Hello. Who's this? Hello. Hey, this is Chris. Oh, like, just, I mean, are you in the chat all the time? Yeah, Chris <laughs> Pyatt is usually how it's listed. Oh, okay. Cool. So what What do you got? What, uh, what, what uh, city is this happening in? Uh, Snellville, Georgia. Snell, like, oh, wow. You know what's weird is I typed in SN in Google Earth and it immediately came up with Snell. Snellville, Georgia. That's the first one. Isn't that yeah. weird? You'd think it would have had another option at some point. But, all right, Snellville, Georgia. All right. Okay. Um, it's You're going to look for the target off of Highway 124 or Scenic Highway. Most, I'm always assuming that everybody would know about this case already, which is why I never called in. Is there a, um, there's only I'll, one target, though, in the whole town that I see? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so, all right. Yep. So April twenty April twenty sixth, I think it was two thousand and nine. Um, Heather Strube was murdered in that parking lot. Uh, it happened during store business hours. I actually worked at the Target and was inside the doors when we heard the gunshot. Um, I don't have any. I never knew her or anything like this. This was just a drop off point between her and her ex husband to uh, give their child back and forth. They were separated or divorced one. And uh, it, I guess my main point in calling is just that, that that actually, even though I didn't have any personal involvement, just it happening and there were a couple of team members that I worked with that were out there when it happened that tried to render aid to her. And there was just, they had to pull one of the persons off of her that was trying to render aid because there was just no point. It was a headshot like in the forehead between the eyes. Um, she was gone before she hit the ground. Wow. Um, what was her name again? It, Heather Strube, S-T-R-U-B-E. R-U... Oh, sorry, I missed Yeah, it. B as in boy, E. Oh, oh okay. There's probably not too many of those in, in the paper. Yeah, that was the... You know, it popped right up. 2009... Yeah, so did they catch the guy, or was it, why, was it like a jealousy boyfriend type thing? Or? No, actually, it was her mother-in-law. Mother-in-law? Jesus. Yeah, she dressed up in a long black wig, kind of like dreads, and put on a, pan, a suit and had a truck out behind the Target, and she knew when they would be meeting uh, and walked around the front and walked up uh, between the cars. I guess Heather was putting the little boy back into the car seat so she did this to her own grandson you know i mean i know he was young but 
she, uh, I guess, called her name or whatever, got her attention, and Heather turned towards her, and she blew her away right then and there. And but what was the reasoning it was, for it? It was about a it was custody issues between oh, the so, mom and the dad. And, oh, okay, so it is kind of like what I'm saying, like an, it, you know, like a yeah, <laughs> it wasn't a boyfriend, but a domestic issue. That's what it sounded like. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, she dressed like a man, and then she shot her, and then. If you are looking at the picture that you have right there, um, the one, two, three, four, the f actually it's like the fifth all over from the left. Um, right here, this all the one? trees there. Yeah, uh, yeah, you were back at it. Yeah, you, but you said a fifth one over from the left. So if you yeah, start here, the one you're pointing out. I'm, no, yeah, you were right where you were, where you were moving the mouse back and forth. Okay. And then, yeah, right. right there. Yeah. If you come down to this, the trees right there that you're on there, the second set, three car spaces on the left-hand side is where she was parked and where she was killed. Right here, this one? Yeah. Yeah, there's actually a pole right there. And for a long time, her family would bring out, like, flip-flops and Starbucks and just different things, and they would, everybody, we just, all that always stayed on that pole right there, kind of like a tribute to her. Hmm. I've never heard of this one. Uh, yeah, it was. It affected a lot of people, um, and I'm, I'm. I know all crime affects all people, but I had never. I called you before about the fact that I was robbed a long time ago, but not even that affected me the way this did. Um, and just there were. That, I believe it was either a Saturday or Sunday afternoon when this happened, and that parking lot was filled with teenagers everywhere because the teenagers come to that Target on the weekends, and there were just people everywhere that saw this happen, and they. It was just horrific. The people that were just on the ground on the curbs just bawling, and and nothing like that had ever happened in Snowball. Something just so evil and outright and out in front of everybody. It had never happened before. And I've been in Snowball most all my life. So she didn't want her son to have to pay child support. Something, she didn't want the but, mom to have custody. Yeah, but I mean, but that's it. probably why, though, right? Because I mean, then you're probably because then you're paying a lot of money. Because a lot of times, they, you know, you're not you're still going to get to see. The kids, and she probably wouldn't have cared that much, but it was probably more that her son was going to have to pay. How many kids did she have? Just the one. Oh, just one? Okay. Well, yeah, maybe Yeah, not. yeah. But it sounds like the but son on this one headline here, the one I'm looking at here, it says, son asks on tape, mom, why did you do it? So he didn't have a clue that, yeah. that uh, she was doing this? No, I mean, I, they never could come up with any evidence against him, and I really don't think he had anything to do with it. Um, at least I'd like to think that. Um, but he, yeah, on tape he said it, and he did it with the police there too. Um, and if you read about the articles, I think that he knew when they pulled him in, when he heard what happened, I think he knew automatically that his mom did it. Hmm. So anyway, her, her wow. uh, mom and aunt, came back to the target a few times over the next like six months or so they would come back in and visit with us and just let us know how they were doing and um just check in with us and i think it i don't know why they chose to do that i mean i i didn't think anything bad i loved the fact that they came back in there because we felt like they were helping us because i'm telling you it was just traumatizing to all of us it it just I, it was just horrible, absolutely horrible. What were um, you doing there? What was your? Uh... I worked at I worked at the Target. Oh, you worked at the. Uh, so I, heard, oh, I am one of those people that runs out and to stuff when things happen. Um, so when I heard the gunshot, I took off running. But by the time I got, the offices are kind of sectioned off, so you have to go out a certain door. So I was at the front of the building back in the offices, but I had to go around to get out another door to come back up front. <laughs> but that lady was already gone by the time I got out there. But there were other people trying to help the two target team members that I'm talking about that were trying to help Heather. And um, the police got there really, really fast, but she was already gone. She had already hightailed it behind the target. She had her little white truck parked behind the target so she could make her get away. So was she trying to so dress she... up like a man? Yeah, she was. See, that's she so was. weird because we have that other case. I think it's in Texas, too, with a girl at the... Uh... She was setting up a uh, 
I don't know, a garage sale. And then in the morning, that car pulls up, and this person came out dressed like a woman with boots on, with long hair yeah. and everything. I think it, it is a guy, in my opinion. I mean, I'm hundred. I'm almost like a hundred percent. Runs over, I, shoots her in the face, well, I and personally, then, if you, yeah. Huh? If you ever saw the video of her, there is video footage out there that the tar, that Target caught. But back then, that Target had some of the worst security cameras. Their system was just ridiculously old. Mm -hmm. But if you see it, I personally think that she was trying to look like she was uh, a different race also. And the wig that she shows and all that, I mean, I really think she was trying to, you know what I mean, do everything she could to, to keep from being recognized. So she was trying to be like a, are you saying like a, a black person or I, Hispanic or something? I think she was because the wig looked like dreads. And I, I, I mean, I think she was trying to look, if not African-American, then I mean, some other, just yeah. not white. Well, that's what, you know what, that's one of the things that really sucks too, is that when people, they invent a story, uh, a lot of times they'll throw in, you know, oh, it's a black person or Hispanic or something like that, as if that's somehow going to, it makes it more scary. And that that is that is one of those things that's kind of that, um, a racial thing that goes on in our society. Yeah. Like they always yeah. say that. It's ridiculous, you know. So yeah, it is. maybe she was trying to spin, do that same spin right there. I think she was. I definitely think she was. Yeah. But anyway, I just wanted to tell you about that. And uh, just, I will never forget her name. And I will never, you know, I will just never. I think about her child. I mean, not every day. I, I mean, time, you know, it fades all over. But every time I'm on your show, or not on your show, but listening to it, and you're going over a case, I always think about Heather. Always think about her. So, anyway. Yeah, so she actually had, um, had just picked up the child and was at, the target with the baby or the child right yeah the dad had just left he had he had they met in the parking lot and mm. the dad gave her gave heather the son back and he pulled out of the parking lot and she was strapping him into the car and then i guess she must have called her name or did something and, and she turned around and when she turned around she fired the gun and how close was she when she shot oh i mean feet as oh, in so it's right there, huh? Really close. She was right there at her. And that's why I said that when I say there was no hope, there really was no hope because, I mean, she shot her right there in the forehead between the eyes above a little bit, and there was brain matter everywhere. She was gone. Wow. Man, what a nightmare. So, I mean, it does sound like that other one that I was trying to, I was telling you about at the garage. You know which one I'm talking about? Yeah, I want. Yeah, I was watching that night when you went out, when you went over that one. Yeah, except that's like the reverse—a guy dressed like a woman. Yeah. And then you could just tell by the way he stood over and came up and finished her off. That was a total guy yeah. type of shot right there. And then the running, the way he yeah. ran, looked like a guy too. I thought. So. Anyways, yeah. wow, that's interesting. I might have to look into that one at some point. Just to yeah, tell well, the story. Just, if you know. watch the video, if you watch the video footage that I have, you will see how, I mean, she had this planned out. I mean, like, there's, I mean, she was very deliberate in what she did. You can even tell that through the walking through the parking lot and the way she cut around the side of the parking and parking lot and came up behind the, the island, so to speak, of trees and stuff. I mean, she was really deliberate in what she was going to accomplish that day. Yeah, well, where do you see the... Uh the surveillance. Where where would I find that? Um, gosh, I don't know. I know it was all over the news back then. They kept showing it because they were trying to find the person. You know, this is before they figured out it was the mother-in-law. Because mm -hmm. of the description that first went out, you weren't looking for the mother-in-law. Um, Joanne, Joanna I'll see Hayes, if I can find it. Is it Joanna Hayes, is that her name? Yeah. Yeah, that's her. Let me see if I can see it in here. Hold on. No, there we go. There we go. But witnesses described. No, I don't know. It looks like they're just kind of reenacting it. Maybe they do have it. I think the most shocking thing about this murder was the so that's just reenactments. I think. Husband, I don't think they have the actual 
surveillance. They should this. have it. I mean, well, I don't know if that one does, but I know they had it and they played yeah. it a lot. When it well, if you find happened. it, send it over. Yeah, maybe you can okay. email it to me. That'd be cool. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for taking my call. And I'm done with crime, with the crime stories I can call in. So some typical people better start stepping up. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. I mean, I'm just it's doing it. I'm just doing this for you guys to tell your story. You know, it's, uh, yeah. So if they don't, people well, don't want to call in, they want to call. call. Yeah. Well, thanks for calling in. I appreciate it. Thank you. All Good. right. Thanks a lot. Interesting. Bye. All right. Bye. Man, just think how whacked out you'd have to be as a mother to do something like that. Uh, probably not, Jay Bear. Why, why, why would I do that? Sometimes people get so interested in one case, they're so hyper-focused hyper on it. You know, there's no nothing new in that case. That, that case is was just a shit show from the very beginning. And I don't even know what the truth is in that uh, Carly Gousset case. It's just so, you know, you got all these websites. Ooh, people kind of coming up with these theories and, you know, acting like they've, it's it just, there still is nothing on that one. Yeah. Just, it's just absolutely, that, that was probably the quickest case uh, quickest I've ever seen a case go cold in my life. Yeah, it'd be great to know what happened to her, but it's just not interesting to go over it a thousand times. You know, if you tell me what happened to her, I'd be like, oh, wow, that's interesting. But there's nothing to discuss in that case at this point. All right, 905. You can uh, unmute yourself. Hey, Chloe's eating dry food. Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. It's Mama Dukes, Gray. Mama Dukes. <laughs> Channel member. <laughs> How are you? Yeah. How's it going? Well, I wasn't sure if it would help, but um, do you this type? happened a long time ago. Oh, yeah. Well, tell me where. Do you type much in there, though? I don't seem like I read the name Dukes too often. Yeah. Your name I sounds familiar. A little. I mean, I've seen you before. But... <laughs> All right. Where, where, where is this location? Where are we going? on this uh, what town you're going to orangeville ontario canada oh you were just typing a, a minute ago i was i wasn't sure anyone would want to hear the story oh that's me I think. <laughs> can you hear me okay yeah yeah i have to go i have to go uh check this out so you just talk to everybody you're you're running the show for a second <laughs> oh wicked wicked how's everybody I know there's a bit of a delay. Oh my goodness, excuse me. I would not be a good host, guys. They're going oh, nuts. Not too oh, much. shit. Oops. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I just broke my headsets. Oh, man. You didn't. Oh, God. Here, I have to get some. Hold on a second. Gray, I'm the worst host ever. <laughs> oh, man. It's kind of funny because it's never this quiet in my house. I have six kids, so it's real quiet, <laughs> and I don't know what to say. Yeah, well, go ahead. Well, are you still there? Because I my headset I broke, am. but uh, whatever. Can you still use it? Well, I can hear out of the right side. Yeah, so go ahead. I'm in uh, Orangeville. <laughs> Yep, Orangeville, Ontario, Canada. It's a teeny tiny town, and it was a lot smaller 25, 30 years ago. Actually, it's been longer than that, because I was, wow, not quite 12. Yep, so what's going on? <laughs> okay, so basically what happened was, um, you want the, I guess you want the whole thing. So if you can imagine sitting in the classroom, 12 years old, and we all see a commotion outside, there's police officers. And I'm talking out the window of our classroom was the play field. So there was a small area of tarmac, a great big area of yeah. grass. Yeah, where is this? Had to be half where is this? 
in the town. Orangeville. I know, in, I know, but what, the, what, what, what school uh, or whatever, you know? I'm trying to think, one sec. It was Dawson, Madison, Madison Avenue. Dawson what? So I was at the, what do you What do you mean? I was, you said it was like, a, there was like a school or something, right? Yeah, sorry. It's the school on Madison Avenue. At the time, it was called Parkinson Centennial Public School. I think it still is. Yeah, that doesn't come in. Really? Yeah, just, uh, what, what, what? I'll go to the murder site. That might be easier for you because that was um, St. Peter's Catholic School where it actually occurred. Okay, right there. And the perpetrator was actually an altar boy from St. Timothy's, which is right across the street. But I'm getting ahead of myself. So long story, we saw police, and I mean a lot of police. It was RCMP, OPP, and the Orangeville Police Service all walking an arm's distance apart across our field. So, of course, we all wanted to know what was going on. And when I got home that night after school, my mom was a mess. And at the time, she was off on maternity leave driving a bus. And she told me that two of her students had been murdered. And they had been murdered by another child who was uh, 16, I believe. But this started real small and got real big. And it was all over the news. And my dad had, like, a VCR, which was unheard of, right, at the time. But he recorded all the news broadcasts because... They were friends of ours, the kids' um, names, uh, the Babinos, and it went everywhere. Like, it was national news because the boy blamed the killings on Dungeons & Dragons. What year was this? 1984. Yeah. And every it it created a hysteria. They pulled the games from every store and actually banned them in the province of Ontario and parents were able to drop them off at the police station and if your kids were playing it they had to go for counseling like it was crazy how do you spell the bad I did send you an email regarding the actual case I don't know if you can look it up Um, just today probably get it done yeah I just sent it a little Uh, what was how do you spell bad news I think let me just grab it so I give you the correct spelling okay so it's B A B I N E A O E A U. Wait. Oh, oh, like okay. I N E A U S, like that. U. There's no S yeah. at the B A B I N E A U. The Babino. Excuse me. It was Monique and Danielle Babino? They were nine and eleven. And they were my friends. Wow, that's crazy. Like Malik, M-A-L-I-Q-U-E? Yeah, Monique. Oh, Monique. M-O-N-M-O-N-I-Q-U-E. Sound like you said Monique. And then Daniel. Sorry. (laughs) And Daniel with the regular spelling. Monique was a nine-year-old, and then her brother Daniel was 11 or 12. Yeah, right there. Yeah, I played more with her than I did with him. Now, so what was the motive here? (laughs) That was the crazy thing. He wasn't even like a friend to these kids. I think the story was that he was in um, karate with Daniel. And and I've heard a few different versions of this, but I heard that um, they had gone to like a a meetup, a tournament, and Daniel had won and he wanted a rematch. I know that... um, the perpetrator, as he's referred to, because another unique thing about the case was the perpetrator became the very first youth to be protected under Ontario's Young Offenders Act. Hmm. Um, he was also found probably not already by reason of- probably already out right then. He was probably out quick, right? Yeah. Well, he was supposed to be given three years, <laughs> but I can tell you, um, three because years of the job I did. Jeez. Yeah. What a <laughs> yeah. Joke. Insanity. Because he was going to get out at 18. See, everybody, whenever I diss on Canada and their laws and stuff like that, this is what I'm talking about here. If you knew what he did to them, they were mutilated. And they were found between two portables on 
the Catholic school property. Mm-hmm. He had stolen his older brother's keys and broke into the school, called the Babineaux and invited them to come and supposedly killed Monique in the girls' change room and Daniel in the other and then used his brother's caretaker's equipment to do his best to clean up the mess. But I know their bikes were found at the fence line and it, it, was, it didn't take them long to figure out who did it. His brother was the janitor and yeah. And it also didn't take long in such a small town for people to figure out who he was. Uh, so, so but I the, know yeah. when I was about 30, because I was in corrections, I ran into someone who worked at uh, CELAPS, which is the Canadian Insane Asylum for the Criminally Insane. He was still there. So even though he could have gotten out after three years, I know he was still incarcerated at mm-hmm. CELAPS when I was 30. So that had been 18 years at that point, 19 years. Uh, okay, well, at least he's in... Uh... But it's just the fact so that he, he doesn't have a chance of getting out. You know, that's the part yeah, that I can't stand. he would stand. have done his Y.O. time. You know, like the guy <laughs> that chopped off the head in the bus in Canada, and he gets out. Oh, he was just, you know, If I told you that I was actually involved with friends with someone else that was killed um, years later, and she actually went missing, and her baby daddy told everybody that she took off went to toronto and became a dancer or something like that and then um he was arrested with her head in a container on the back of his motorcycle how come over here it says were the kids abducted from the school in this case they were actually killed at the school but the belief was originally that they had been abducted they didn't find the body um till the next day which because is why it, the police were walking. Yeah, well, the police, it sounds like it says uh, there was no signs of forced entry into the family home, located nope. in a quiet he residence. he invited home. them to come to the school, and so, they went. Okay, so they just went. He never even went. To the, they just thought maybe they were abducted because they didn't have permission yeah. or something. But so. No, because they didn't realize. Like, that's how it ended up coming out who it was, was because he had stolen his brother's work keys, opened the school, opened the gym, and then called this kid out, Daniel, and was like, hey, let's do a rematch. For fun, you know, and mm-hmm. then he killed them. But I'm telling you, uh, at the time, Gray, the D and D thing. I mean, it was everywhere. There were posters and signs. Oh yeah, well, it's page. huge in the United Great. States too. I mean, like my brother. Here's here's what you get with D and D people: you either get doctors, lawyers, and scientists, <laughs> or absolute whack jobs. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Because I agree. They, they, I have a lot of friends that play yeah. it and they're fine. Yeah. And most of the time, people who play D and D, they're always like really successful people later. But there's always those few that were playing that just took it a little too seriously. You know. Yeah. <laughs> and apparently, he was one of those because he did like the role playing side of it, where they'd meet up and stage fights and things like that. And I know a lot of people didn't like playing with him because he got really upset if things didn't go his way. Like, there were stories about um, him rolling the dice or getting a card he didn't want and just freaking out. I don't know if everybody knows what Dungeons and Dragons is, but yeah, it was it was crazy. It was crazy. So, did you guys have that down down there, like where? Oh yeah, they played it, it all the time. Kind of like it wasn't game? on Billboard, but I mean, people would play it. You know, you it's a role playing game where you use dice. And you build, you know, you'll have a dungeon master who has a Mm -hmm. little map that they build and they build up the whole story and then people play and, you know, they have odds of, you know, of winning a battle based on what you roll and, you know, just different things like it's just kind of a, yeah. you had to use your mind. That's what's different about it. It was a strategy thing, right? It was very tactical, very strategy based game. Yeah, and and chance too. When we played it. Yeah, I mean, there was chance. We played it because it was banned. (laughs) Well, it wasn't like that at all here. Yeah, I mean, I think Canada is sort of like the big brother. You know, everybody knows best. You know, that's what I'm trying to avoid here is the the thought police. But apparently it looks like they might win. (laughs) (laughs) Just insane. Oh, my goodness. People want to vote for... Well, I know a few years ago there was a big article that came out that said... There was like a hundred and, and so many cases, I think it was like 140 or 130 cases um, of people that are incarcerated, mentally disturbed persons that are incarcerated and have some 
leading where they played that game or the game played some role. So they were still 25 years later trying to say that the game was, it did things to your brain. So, yeah. yeah. And apparently his dad had found a bunch of that kind of stuff. Um, when the police came to like search the house and stuff, that his whole room was done up in D and D stuff and he had costumes and yeah, it was crazy. It was, it was yeah. scary at the time because they were little kids. Like it wasn't like he killed kids even his own age. These were little kids. Like she was nine, you know, and the rumor mill amongst my age group, it was horrendous. The stories that were going around about how they'd been killed and stuff. So it, it had a profound imp- impact on me, that and my mom making the whole family go to the funeral. And it was an open casket. So yeah, it was, it was ugly. Yeah. Well, thanks for calling in and telling the uh, story. It looks like you sent me a few, no a few problem. emails. <laughs> I did. I sent you uh, a cold case. I sent you an unsolved. All right, cool. I'll check them out. Hopefully you'll get a chance to look at it. That's like the biggest thing around here right now anyway. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you calling in and telling your story. Thank you. No problem, Greg. Stay healthy. (laughs) You too. (laughs) We're the man. Thanks. All right, see (laughs) you. Yeah, see, that's what you don't want. You don't want to have... See, that's what we're going to get. See, here's the thing is whenever somebody is... um, like, for example, I think that what's going on right now in our society about thought police, you can't talk about certain things and all that. It's always great for the people who agree with it. So they don't see what other people are seeing. They're like, thank God they're shutting that down because they're not realizing what they're allowing to happen. And unfortunately, we're turning into a society where you can't really say a lot of stuff that you want to talk about you know just it's weird that you have to dance around and how to word things why can't we just talk sometimes this headphone feels weird it's wiggling around it's like the whole side look at look at <laughs> see that that thing broke and I'm not going to duct tape I'm just going to buy a new one okay forget it Yeah. Wow, we have 300 and something people watching. Must not be the types of shows that are interesting, yet again. Yeah, it's like the book 1984. Ironically, that's the same year we were just talking about. What's the hatchet for? Oh, look at that. Darlene just sent me to prison. How unfortunate. This this uh, computer has a different jail, though. Look at that. <laughs> this one almost looks more, uh, I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to redo my entire set, I think. Maybe we should do a show one time where we're just doing a, uh, you know, building a new set. We'll do that for, like, channel members or something like that. Oh, look at that. Lee D. it looked like she was going to help out. <clears throat> Give me a head fake. And it's no bail. Yeah, it'd be cool. Maybe we could do it for like members only. Just build a, a set. And then I think I should also have a, kind of a standard thumbnail. You know? Where there's sort of a, a, a general look to them. And I might actually be making another channel. I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to make another channel where I... I'm posting videos, like the shorter, you know, the 10 to 15 minute videos, where that's all that channel is going to have. And because I think there's just so many stories we've talked about that nobody knows about. Oh, wow. Look, look at that. Thank you for the bail. Lee D. Gene Fish. Zozo. 
One sly angel, Miss Giss. <laughs> I'm gonna. I got cab ride home too. And then also Susanna Macgiola Padre or Giola Padre. Dario Caspian horses rock and Crystal Ann. Yeah, maybe it'll be like Gray Hughes too, <laughs> or you know something else. I don't really know. I'm not sure what to call it. Um, but maybe you guys can all sub over there and you can watch the the videos. And Kubi might help out. You know, I just sent her with the first one. We'll see how how it goes. I'm gonna. I want to do one where I'm. You know, narrating. Like I'm reading it. And, um, you know, like I've already done all the research. I've done all the research already. And um, a lot of it. So I could just send that over already. And then she can look up more stuff or whatever, put, to get, put it together. And then I can just, you know, see how that goes. I'm sure I, you know, I'll, I'm not just going to have her do it for free at some point if it's worth doing. I don't know if it would be something like uh, once, you know, videos once a week or twice a week. I don't know. Well, they're just the same topics that we've talked about, but condensed down. Because, you know, a lot of times on the show we're, we go over it and then we read another article that has some of the same overlapping stuff and then. And that really drives it into your head. But by the time you're done, you know it really well, right? <laughs> no, you wouldn't. You will not be kicked out, Kubi, if it sucks. Okay. You will not be kicked out. Not a chance. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I got to let myself out of jail. Thank you for the bail. I was just in the middle of talking. Forgot that I was still in prison. I liked it there. They had good food. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Jessica. I was going to sit in there all day if I, if you hadn't said it. I had nowhere to go. You know, it's kind of weird. Sometimes you wonder, you know when people are let out of jail and they were a loner and they don't know any, where do they go when they're out, you know? Just sort of, I mean, what a nightmare that would be. <laughs> Hey, thanks, Mama Dukes. No, he's not. He doesn't have the prison scrubs on right now. I got to get a picture with uh, Chloe wearing the prison scrubs, though. I know. It kind of just sucks, though, right? So that's what I was saying. Wouldn't you rather just stay in jail, then? Yeah, it would be a channel of just videos. You know, the kind where, uh, you know, I'm just sort of narrating. And then I fill in with pictures, tell a story. You know, like those other YouTube channels do it. You might not see my face. There might be, what I might do, though, is do it, and then at the end uh, say what my thoughts are. Because I, I, I'm just going to be putting, you know, the video is just the facts, no... No uh, speculation, but then maybe at the end I would have speculation, right? So it'd be, you tell the story, and then I might come on and say, you know, you sort of wonder if, you know, whatever the hell it was. And you know what the first one's going to be? It's going to be uh, the uh, Walter R. Hibbert one that we've talked about a long time ago. That one needs to have its own video that you don't have to sort of search through a whole bunch of crap to go find it. Because that, that's one of the weirdest, craziest stories I've ever seen. You know, 1939 even. I, like what's crazy, when you look at the newspaper articles, you, there's pictures of Hitler over here and over there. What do you mean if I, I wanted some water? What does that mean? I don't get it. Hey, somebody called a little while ago, and, and then you hung up, so why don't you call back again? 
You actually had your picture on there. Yeah, right. Well, is that what you want to call it? Did you want... Yeah, I mean, I know he asked for water. That just didn't make any sense with what we were talking about. All right, here, let me... Um, 931, you can unmute yourself. Yeah, but what's crazy about uh, Hilbert, though, is that happened in 39, and then he lived all the way to, I think, 2009. I mean, it's like he just got to live a great life. And okay, is this nine three one? You're on. Yeah. Yeah. What's your what? Who who is this? Oh, this is Cassandra. Cassandra. All right. What's going on? Yeah. So I live in Crossville, Tennessee, in the United States, and I've lived in my apartment for like a year, and it's been pretty calm and quiet around here. And then it was like August twenty six. I worked late. Um, I work at a group home. And I came home like at 11.30 and I guess around like 12.30 at night, a guy crossed the street from me, murdered his wife and drug her across the road through my yard and dumped her in the woods behind my house. And when I woke up, like my entire backyard was... Wait, can you say that again? It was... Can you say that again? You you should work... You you should be an auctioneer, man. That was like the quickest... Oh. You're so fast. Do it again. Do it again. All right, let's do it again. I really... (laughs) I was just typing something in and you're already... Okay, go ahead. Yeah, so I'm in Crossville, Tennessee. No, I got that um, part. And but... I work... Okay, so there was a guy who murdered his wife across the street from me in another apartment complex, and he drug her across the road through my yard and then dumped her in the woods back behind my house. Wow. And so when I woke up the next morning, like, the TBI was here, the sheriff's department was here, the normal cops were here. My backyard, I live, like, in a townhouse, and there's four townhouses together. And um, there's like a space in between us, and our entire backyard was roped off uh, with police tape. It was pretty wild. What was the? Uh, what did it turn out? This is just this August, not too long ago. Yeah, it was this August. The last thing I haven't heard anything since like the 27th, and he went for a preliminary hearing, and it was kind of like he got bail. No, he didn't get bail, and then there hasn't been anything else. Like I haven't heard anything else about it. Hmm. That's weird. I mean, so there's no, I mean, you, what did you, tell us what you noticed again when you were watching. Were you watching just a lot of cars and police? Yeah, like I woke up because somebody was knocking on the door and when I went downstairs, it was the TBI. They were like, hey, can you tell us if you saw anything unusual last night? And I was like, no, why? And um, they had said somebody had been murdered and they didn't say a whole lot about it, but I know the people who live next to me, and they were like, oh, yeah, they told us that this guy murdered his wife and dumped her back here in our backyard. And I was like, oh, great. And so when I was talking to the TBI, I was like, hey, can you tell me if it's the people like directly across from me? Because there's a couple who get the police called on them all the time over here because they fight all the time. And that's who I thought for sure it was going to be, and it wasn't. He was on up just a little bit. But, yeah, it was like 1239, and he just dragged her through the yard and dumped her. I was like, okay. Wow. Well... You know what's amazing is how fast you can talk, but you don't even put ums in there. You know, like most people oh. have ums. Like you literally just keep. That's hard to do. I can't. I cannot do that. I mean, you should be a teacher too because you could literally teach kids probably three times the amount of information. But man, that's, that's just a, that's what I should have done. <laughs> well, uh, let's see. I, you know, when I typed in group homes, there's like ten of them. So I couldn't yeah, really see. I, you probably so, don't want to have you know, uh, put your know, address or yeah. anything on here. But. No, but the the street that it happened on was Village Lane. It's not specific about my specific like house. So, but yeah, there was it was pretty wild, and there wasn't a lot of like news coverage on it. And I was like, okay, well, yeah, that was the one I kept looking at too. Huh? Just in that little kind of a, it's almost like a one huge cul-de-sac kind of. Right. Yeah. It loops around at the it end. It is. There's what, a bunch what, of apartments around here, um, and then the townhouses and stuff. But yeah, it was pretty crazy, um, and it's been really quiet. There's not been a whole lot about it, so I don't, I don't know what they're doing. 
But somebody called. It was real weird. They said somebody called 911, and it was just like a few seconds in a phone call, and then they hung up. So then the police were dispatched, and then, like, the whole thing unfolded from there. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I mean, it's, uh, it was, you didn't find any articles in the paper or anything like that? There's, like, a few from our local um, news stations, and it was on, like, WATE and, like, the TBI newsroom. Um, but for the most part, that was it. And the last one that um, came out was on the 27th of August, and it was just about his preliminary hearing. And that's been it. There hasn't been anything else. Because I've been looking, because I wanted to know, you know? What was going on? Because it was pretty crazy. But that's the last thing I'd seen was on the 27th. And it was from like 105.1057 news.com was where it was on. Well, was the body the in the section. woods? You know how there's those big chunks of woods back there? Or just in the back? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he drug her through the yard and then down through those woods and dumped her. Which one of these houses was the one? Um, let me... I'll keep it I still. Okay, let's say you you go you get into uh, let's see Village Lane, right? And you know how right. when you pull in, it goes slightly starts turning and then goes straight, or you can turn left and then loop around. What is it on that side or the straight one? Yeah, you go left and you go around almost toward the bottom. When you say bottom, what do you mean? Like, like when you go like toward the bottom of the loop. You mean like no, well, well, let's okay. Let me just try to do it like that. You you get on the the street village lane, and you take a left, and then it starts turning, and then there's a long straightaway. Is it all the way at the end down there? Yeah. So it's like a racetrack, the way it looks from the sky, you know. Yeah. A real narrow it, one. So, it does. So is it the very far end after you take that left, where there's actually yeah, because there's no I don't see any homes at the far end. Is it the Maybe Cause it's not by the park. It's on up from that a little bit. Um, hmm. me. Sorry, I'm on my phone. On the phone, so yeah, I've got to pull your YouTube back up and see if it'll let me see how you're looking at it. Yeah, because I always come in like from the right, and I just come around and. Yeah, you, there's only one entrance in there, though, right? Right. So you come in and but then... I don't turn like where the stop sign is. Like I keep going. So like I'm looking directly at your screen and I'm over. Well, I just, you can just tell me where no. the, where the house was, where the murder was. I don't. So they've never been clear. It's one, I believe it's one of the two middle apartments, like right in the middle. Oh, these... There's like the right and the left, but then there's the middle. These are apartments. And they've never said, yeah, they've never said like which apartment building it was, but I know it's one of the. Like the three that are straight in the middle. Oh, okay. It's right near the end, then. There's those three that are perfect. Yeah. Like right here, or these four here. Are you talking about? These are all apartments. All these. Yeah, yeah they're all apartments. I wouldn't have thought that. There's no at houses. It. Yeah, we're like we're at townhouses or like apartment complexes. So and somewhere was the was, was the house that she was the was the house that she was killed in one of the ones next to the woods or right in that middle section. No, she was right in that middle section. Wow, so you'd have to drag her across the street. Yeah. Then through somebody else's yard and then into the woods, right? Through my yard, yeah. Like, drug her oh, across the street. Through your through yard. My yard and then into the woods. <laughs> yeah. Okay. My yard and the neighbor, we have like a strip in the middle, and they that's where he drug her through and dumped her in the yard. It was wild. Oh, I see this street. Like, this street here where it says village. Yeah. I don't know if you can see this, but like. And then maybe back through the woods over there. Hmm. Yeah, because she was pretty far back. Like when they brought her out, it took them a while to get her out um, and into the ambulance. But yeah, it was pretty crazy. I was like, not how I expected to spend my day. Um, no. no that, uh... I got called into work and I was like, listen, like I can't leave my driveway. There's TBI out here. There's the police. Like, sorry about it. But I don't think I'm leaving right now. <laughs> It was a good excuse, too, even if they would yeah, let you like, go. Huh. <laughs> even if they would let you. It's great when you have a salary job, but maybe not as much yeah. if it was hourly, right? Because then it's like, ah, crap. Right. Yeah. 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 It was wild. I told my mom, I was like, I like true crime, but I didn't want to be this close to it. Like, it, that's too much for me. Mm. 
So, yeah. All right. Well, thanks for uh, calling in. That's a crazy one. Perfect. Yeah. Thanks. And thanks for have, saying it three times because I had. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's pretty cool. I wish I wish I could do that, you know, to be honest with you. Uh, let's see. All right. Well, it I appreciate it. a lot of practice, but thanks. Yeah. yeah, thanks a lot. Have a good one. All right, bye. Let me see. Somebody, I guess, sent me, was it Heather in there? She said she sent an article on it. Let's see. A 911 hung up traced back to an apartment in Crossville led authorities to investigate the death of a local woman. Oh, man, so she called 911 to get help, but uh, then the phone got hung up, and he probably did it. Her husband had been charged in connection with the woman's homicide. Ronnie No Ambrosio Cruz, 33, Village Lane, is charged with one count of first-degree murder in the death of Santa Cecilia, uh, let's see, Ambrosio Mendez, no age available. The investigation began in the dark hours of Sunday morning when Crossville police were dispatched to the 100 block of Village Lane. So let's see how close we were. I guess, well, where's 200 though, that's the thing. All right, so it's, well, see, <laughs> that means it's in between where it said 100 and 200. So inside of here, so it's right where we were looking. <clears throat> a press release from Tennessee Bureau of Investigation does not reveal what was found by officers when they arrived on the scene, but a reverse call to the number let officers know they were at the right location. Evidence and information at the scene led police to the discovery of a woman's body in a wooded area behind the apartment complex. The TBI press release does not state how the victim died. Um, he had a $250,000 bond. So there you go. Crazy. And I, I can tell that a call's in, so just one moment. Where is it? I can't even find my... There it is, Zoom right there. Okay, 215. You can unmute un, uh, yourself. Hello. 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 This is Berserker Loki. <laughs> <laughs> Berserker Loki? Yes. Yeah, I've seen your name. In there, was my so. huh? yeah. Was my picture the one that popped up? Because I had called, and then I chickened out and hung up. It could have been, but it's not there now. You must have got rid of it. It was like a cartoon face or something. Oh, no, then that wasn't me. Okay, well, then I just totally ratted myself out. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I had called because I, I was going to tell my true crime thing, but then I was like, oh, no, it's totally not true crime enough, but maybe it is. Well, it could have been you, um, though, because nobody, I think it puts your... What, if, I don't know what you sign in with, but it could have been your image from... You know, it could go be. From Google. Maybe it's cartoony looking. I don't know. But anyways. Okay. Where's it Nobody located? Nobody died in mine. Where is it located? <laughs> it's in Abington, Pennsylvania. A B I N G T O N. Oh, okay. okay. A oh, A B I N? Yeah, like a. A B I N G T O N. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I thought you were saying um, okay. Abington. Like yes. a V. But, okay. Uh, Abington um, Township, too, kind of, in that area? Yes. Okay. 19001 would be the area code. So this would be at, actually, um, Highland Elementary School. And this took place in 1995. So, I was about 10 years old at the time. This would have been my fifth grade 
a social studies teacher. He was actually arrested. Um, him and his wife were arrested for um, actually uh, having blah. I can't talk for um, having sexual relations with the, some of the students, and he actually was a Boy Scout um, leader and having relations with the Boy Scouts. Like well, how, how, well what workout. was the mother doing? I mean, his wife. I she mean. was, she was sleeping with um, the students too. The and boy he scouts. Was watching. Like yeah, and the boy scouts. Wow. What's yeah, like um, if you look up like November seventh, nineteen ninety five, I know you'll find news articles that explain like in detail, not like graphic detail, but tells you more so like what he was doing like like he would invite uh, like people over to have um like parties like to get high and drink and then like she would pick what boys she wanted to do stuff with and like go and take like have them stay over and she would have parties with the boys and him and they would do stuff together what was his name uh david miller can you guys quit doing the typing in the things like that? It's getting uh, nauseating. David Miller. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I think it, it's weird because that's kind actually of a like, common name, but it did yeah, pop he, up. Yeah. He was actually like a really good friend with my, my mom at the time. She didn't, like, she didn't believe it at the time. So um, it was like a big shock to everybody, but... You know, it's crazy. Like I had, uh, I had to do like after school, like tutoring with him at his house and stuff. And I never, I had, I, I was never like molested or anything by him, but I never liked him. I was a little, I was a little assholes. And so I, I just put up a front with everybody. So I gave him a hard time, but, uh, I'm glad I did. But, um, if he, if it, like my brothers were older, so they were kind of like, they're like eight years older than I am. So they weren't the age that that was, they weren't my age. So they weren't the ones that were being molested or whatever was happening. But I do know people that my friends that were. So when did you say this was? Because this is, I, my article is November 2nd, 1995. You put November yeah, it 7th. Was, I'm just saying that was like, around the time the articles were, com were oh. coming out but um it was over a period of time like half half a year or so more yeah but around november is when like the story broke that everything was going on wow that's so it's such an odd um scenario with a, a husband with the boys and then the his wife is with the boys like yeah. what? Like what a weird sure. deal, you know. Mm -hmm. That means they were both psycho, but they were together, and he didn't even yeah. like being with her. I guess. <laughs> I mean, what a weird story. Mm -hmm. Jeez. Right, and it 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 seems like he was trying to to like hush her up. Like she was the one who who was a little bit more psycho. Like she was the one, kind of not covering it up at all like she was putting everything out there like oh it's just a little bit of weed it's just a little bit of this it's that like she totally thought everything was fine like it seems like she had like a like a stunted growth or something like she was stuck at a certain age so she thought that this was like an acceptable behavior in a way when it totally wasn't but totally out there but um i think even after he got out of out of prison i think that he was rearrested again for child pornography so he was totally messed up as well but crazy mm. yeah well at least uh, they're locked up for a long time or um i think she was she longer got, than well, him well she got more I'm, than him i'm not sure really? how come i think so why is that i think she did more <laughs> i think she did more than he did mm. but um but I, I don't remember the full, the full how long their uh, sentences were. But um, wow, I know that he was rearrested not too long after he got out. 
Uh, let's see. Yeah, I mean, there's these long articles about it. It'd be kind of interesting yeah. to get the Maybe. whole story on it. It's kind of a little pretty disturbing, though. Yeah. I guess that's why we have the disclaimer at the beginning of the show. <laughs> but yeah, like, I, and I was only 10 at the time, so I had, like, bits and pieces of it. But, like, going back and kind of you know, being curious later on in life and seeing what, like, the full details about certain things were. It was like, oh, my God. Because, like, being young, you don't, like, you know certain things that were, like, people would tell you, and then you kind of don't want to pry more to, like, re-traumatize them. And then when you go and read it, you're like, holy crap. Like, that's what was going on? But it's just, it's crazy to be involved in that. And then knowing how close you were to the person that was actually doing it to your friends, and you're like, you were that close to it actually being you. It's crazy. Yeah, but, well, I'm glad you uh, you didn't get wrapped up in that. But it seems like they were just into boys, right? Yeah, they were into boys. Um, I think that when the boys were bringing other girls into the picture and trying to bring them over to, like, just party and have fun, that's when the wife was starting to freak out. I know why. Like, jealousy was kicking in. And that's when uh, things are getting out of hand. And that's when I think the boys are starting to, like, rebel. And that's when I, I think, like, a, something had happened. And that's when the party that was happening, like, got out of hand and the cops were called. Well, like this one part, that's it says one, one of the boys referred to as victim two was 12. He told police he began to have intercourse and oral sex with Marianne. I mean, that must be the wife. In the last year, mm -hmm. he said he had sex 60 times with her. God, that's crazy. Yeah. I mean, once is but too I think many, that, right? Yeah. yeah. But gonna, I think that he had, like, got a girlfriend and was bringing her over. And that's really what was, like, starting to set things off. Oh, you know what that sounds a lot like? The Coker, you know, the... Mm -hmm. The Cheryl Coker case that we've talked about. So what do you what do you mean? I thought he. So why was he with boys if he now he wants a a, a girlfriend? No, I mean like the the boy, the the boy that the twelve year old oh, was bringing okay. over girls, and the the wife was starting to have like jealousy issues and making it like dramatic. Oh, you mean house. you mean she was jealous of the girl being with the 12, someone someone with the twelve year old. Wow, what a psycho. Yeah. What a psycho. Jeez. It was, yeah, it's sick. Wow. Man, uh, I, I, I'm glad you uh, we worked through that and understood what the hell we, you were doing. Uh, <laughs> that's just nuts. Wow. Yeah, it wasn't It wasn't the husband. It was uh, of the 12-year-old and but the 12-year-old girl. But what did the, hus what did the girl uh, girlfriend of the 12-year-old think when the husband was trying to be with her boyfriend? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, was that what was going on, or was he would he pick somebody different than the, or was it just one boy this whole time? I think there was like a, a handful of boys, but it was one in particular. Jeez. There were several that I know of, but there was one that was like the main victim. But there was a few that she had been with. Hmm. Wow. I might have to, I don't know. I don't even know if I want to look into this one, to be honest with you. I mean, it's just kind of yeah, interesting, I've, but it's just, you know, it's, it's solved and it's also just really, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. We don't like, like I've, I've, I rarely talk about it just because of how insane it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it was something that was definitely right around you at the time. So, yeah. Uh, so thank you for calling in and telling your true crime story. All right. I love the show. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for calling in. Right. See, I wasn't that mean, right? right bye. Come on. Right? No, you're awesome. See? Awesome. You're not mean at all. <laughs> Gray, you're so mean. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks for calling. <laughs> bye. See ya. Bye. <laughs> Gosh, Gray, you're so mean. 
Well, what do you mean? I didn't think he was mean at all. I know, but that's what everybody says. It's so like I keep the ruse going. You know, like they do on the left. They make up stuff and everybody believes it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, good point, good point. Well, no, but why would you want to do that to Gray? Because he's so mean. <laughs> that sounded kind of like you were laughing. <laughs> Was that better? Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Switch, switched it around. Couldn't get back. Anyways, all right. <laughs> so, anyways, I think that's gonna be it for me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go watch TV or do something else tonight. But I appreciate everybody for calling in tonight. Good, good stories. I mean, would it help to actually have uh, something like, uh, you know, make a community post a day or two beforehand so that everybody knows that there's going to be a show that you can call in about. And then you can tell people that you know, knew something, and then they can call in. I don't think that lady called in that Miss Skiss mentioned, right? Like, she never called in. What happened to her? Maybe she just wants to do it on, on the side. Okay. She didn't call. Yes. Thanks, Dottio, Caspian Horses, Rock. Here, you know what I think they should do for president? When, when there's an election year for president, they should have absolutely nothing else that you're voting for. That you, you know how quickly you could go in and cast your vote? All it is is two big circles on a, on a card, and you punch a hole through one of them. Okay? I mean, and then you turn it in. And then maybe you sign it at the bottom. But, uh, you know how quickly you could do that? Instead, oh, we got to go in there, we got to put this one here, we got to do this one there. It just takes like an hour to sit in there, and you keep trying to mark all these things. How about you just vote for president during the election that year and then have mail-in votes all you want for everything else. It just seems like it would be so simple to do it like that. Who mentioned what earlier? What are you talking about? Oh, she had wine? Oh, okay. Who did? The one that was going to call in? Oh, okay. Anyways, everybody, thank you all for your stories tonight. I appreciate it. And uh, that's it. <laughs> okay. Look at, look at, Miscus says no, and then Gene said yes. So you're wrong, Gene, and it was a different person. Oh, okay. And there's Zozo again. No! <sighs> yeah, anyways, the Walter R. Hibbert one that we were going to do is a crazy one because his wife asked for a glass of water, and instead of bringing a glass of water, he stabbed her to death, and then he brought her over the sink and cut her head off, and then he started chopping her body up into bits, and then he um, he got too tired of it at one point. He was like, yeah, I don't know if I can do it. So he just left the all. He was going to take the body parts and bring them somewhere. But then he, he headed off to Canada. And then he actually just turned himself in at one point. And then he was put into an insane asylum for a little bit of time to do observations. And then, uh, I mean, that, those are really interesting notes in that. So you'll have to wait and... Get the, uh, you know, in the story, it's pretty crazy because that guy, 1939, and then he, I think he pled, and, uh, you know, the sucker's still alive in uh, 2009. I mean, what a crazy, how does a guy get to live that long doing what he did? And I, I think he actually killed for, he just wasn't, he didn't even want to be with that, that woman. 
I think it was an arranged marriage, like it was. Yeah, he must have been, I mean, 39, 20, you know, in his 80s somewhere. I mean, he was. Yeah, I've mentioned, I've talked about Kyron Horman before. I've actually talked to his dad. It was during the uh, Allison Watterson case. And I asked him, you know, I don't know. He's probably just really tired of just having it unresolved. I mean, I think it, everybody knows who did it. You know, pretty obvious. Yeah, so anyways, at one point you'll get to check out the video on that case. Yeah. All right, everybody, thank you very much. And um, I guess we'll see you tomorrow. Make sure that you wear your masks and you maintain your social distancing and wash your hands as often as possible. And that's it. All right, everybody, thank you very much for showing up. And I'll leave you guys up. You guys can chat away. I'll leave it up for a while. All right. So that's it. Till next time. Be safe out there. What happened? Oops. Let me try it again. Oh, there we go. This whole time, I have not seen one person that is a crime dissector. Like rejecta, I'm a certified human lie detector. Gonna get ya, gonna stick ya. If you try and play me like an injector, it's crime center. It's my nectar. Well, that's a great who's gonna give another lecture. Crime collector, freak connector. And I'm always gonna be a pup protector. Full deflector, interceptor. And I'm here when I'm spending with a vector on his pector. With all respect, ya. Just remember, I've a temple fucking check. I have no agenda. I'm a pretender. And I'll serve it to you straight out of the blender. And in the end, I'm gonna send you on a mission to reveal the true offender. Yeah, so I'll just get right back to work. All right, everybody. Talk to you. All right. Wow, that was so interesting. All those calls and everything. Yep, yep, they were calls. Yep, yep, they were great. Yeah, you get so excited about everything. Oh gosh, I thought they were neat. They were really neat. They were really neat. <laughs> Wait, you gonna make a rap out of that? Well, I was gonna give it a shot. Okay, good night, John boy. Good night, Mary Lindsay. <laughs> gosh, you're so mean. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Mary Lou, you just... You get so upset about everything. Unbelievable. Be safe out there.